Now, if you have a one liter bottle and you drink 500 mils of water every single day, it wouldn't make sense for you to get a two liter bottle because you're still gonna drink 500 mils of water a day. So with that in mind, if you're just playing games, still gonna use like 12 to 14 gig. So if you had 16 gig, that's more than 14 gig. So you don't need to go to 32 gig RAM. All right, I just got to the office. I've got about 20 minutes spare. So I thought I'd answer the five most common questions that you guys ask me about RAM. So first up, I'll explain what we've got here. We've got a single stick kit of crucial 16 gig DDR5, 4,800 megahertz CL40 RAM, just one stick in there. We've got a two stick kit of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 non-RGB, 64 gig, 5,200 megahertz CL40 RAM. And over here, we've got a 32 gig kit DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RGB RS. This one's four sticks, 3200 megahertz CL16. Now question number one is how much RAM do I need? And it's a bit of a subjective question, but for me, if I ask you a few questions, it's, it's really easy to give you the answer. It's kind of explained with this analogy. Now, if you have a one liter bottle and you drink 500 mils of water every single day, it wouldn't make sense for you to get a two liter bottle because you're still gonna drink 500 mils of water a day. So with that in mind, if you're just playing games and you've got, for example, Warzone 2 open, you've got Discord, Google Chrome, Quite a lot of things open you're still going to use like 12 to 14 gig so if you had 16 gig that's more than 14 gig so you don't need to go to 32 gig ram so what you'll find is that nothing happens like you just you don't get any extra performance now if you're streaming and you're doing this like all day every day and you have obs open you've got like overlays or chats or you know a lot of different things going on multiple monitors then you might find that you use more than 16 gig of ram in that case you'd get 32 gig but there is not really any situation where a gamer or a streamer benefits from 64 gig of RAM. Just remember that water analogy. If you're not using all of it, you don't need any more. Now, question number two is what speed of RAM do I need? And this is kind of, uh, you got to look at DDR4 or DDR5, and I'll get to that in a second. But DDR4 speeds, you're generally going to maximize all your potential at around about 3600 megahertz, but there is a CL rating as well. So the lower the CL rating and the higher the megahertz, the better the performance of your RAM. So if you get 3600 megahertz, but it's CL18, that's quite a bit slower than 3600 megahertz CL14, you'll find that's why that you know CL14 G skill RAM, it costs more than CL18, it's because it's faster. So high megahertz, low CL rating, and that applies to DDR5 as well. So if you get DDR5, you're more likely to get like 6,000 or 6,200 megahertz RAM, and you'll want to get like CL30, CL36, CL40. You want to avoid like CL44 for DDR5 RAM. You want to avoid like 4,800 megahertz because that's the slow stuff, and it's going to actually have an impact on uh, the speed of your processor. The RAM and the processor work together almost directly. The faster your RAM, the faster your processor will, will react. And just a little side note on that, there is like a, you know, a point of diminishing returns where, you know, you spend so much on your RAM, you could have just got a better processor and that will give you more performance overall. That's something to consider as well. So don't get thousand dollar RAM and a Pentium, you know, you pair it properly. Now question number three is, do I need DDR5 RAM? And that kind of ties into what I just said. So the speeds are different on uh, DDR4 and DDR5. A real important thing to consider is that if it's going to cost you quite a bit more to go DDR5 on a Core i5 and for the same price you could have got a Core i9 with DDR4, you're always going to take the Core i9 with DDR4. It's just better. So there's not really any direct benefit to having DDR5, especially if you're playing games, especially these days when we're using like 1440p and 4K monitors. It's kind of graphics card bound, so getting faster RAM isn't going to do very much for your processor whatsoever because it's not really getting utilized to its full potential. Warzone 2 seems to be, as of today, the only real exception to that. So DDR5 seems to have a decent benefit on Warzone 2, but most people don't need DDR5. And I'd kind of expect Warzone 2 to be more optimized in the future. And uh, we'll go back to how it was before, where DDR4 and DDR5 are pretty much head-to-head -head in terms of performance. If you get a Core i9-13900KF and you go DDR4, you're gonna get near enough the same performance as DDR5. Generally not worth the extra cost on the motherboard and the RAM. So my recommendation is DDR4. There's not really any future proofing you're doing by getting DDR5. You know, it's not gonna just one day get 10 times better. So my recommendation is DDR4. Uh, if you have excess cash and you just wanna get something better, then yeah, get DDR5. But you're gonna spend anywhere from like 200 to $500 more to get DDR5. And it's gonna be less than 5% improvement. Now question number four is what is dual channel? And it's a little bit broad. So the easiest way to explain this is to kind of explain what the channels are for you. So if you take a two stick kit like this, let's say it's DDR4, 3600 megahertz. If you take only one stick from that kit and you put it in your PC and you've got one stick in there, that's gonna run at 1800 megahertz effectively. Now, if you take the two sticks and you put it in there, it's gonna run at 3600 megahertz. Single channel is about half the speed of dual channel, that's the point of it. Now, a lot of people on this same topic ask me if they can have four sticks. And uh, that is good for aesthetics, but that does not make it quad channel. Now, there are a lot of cheap PC companies where they'll post online 
and they'll say you can get like 64 gig quad channel RAM and it's really important to remember that is not quad channel. All consumer processors and motherboards are dual channel, not quad channel. So the old Intel enthusiast grade processors and motherboards, you know, they could do quad channel. A lot of their like high-end workstation motherboards can do quad channel, but on uh, Intel Core and AMD Ryzen, you, you're not getting quad channel RAM. It's gonna be dual channel. So four sticks is still dual channel. It's still gonna be 3600 megahertz, for example, but it's four sticks and it just looks better. So if you want it for the aesthetic reasons, go for it. It's not gonna make your PC faster. It's, if anything, less stable and you'll find that you need to get a lower speed when you go for four sticks compared to just having two sticks because the more sticks and the higher the megahertz, the less reliable and stable that it is. On that same topic, just on the quad channel thing, uh, the reason that people go for quad channel RAM on the high-end workstations from like AMD Threadripper, for example, or the Intel Enthusiast range, is because the memory bandwidth is important to them when they're transferring a lot of files and doing a lot of like architectural programs or like 3D modeling or any engineering apps. Those can use high memory bandwidth and memory bandwidth is what is increasing when you get quad channel RAM. For gaming and general workstation like Adobe Premiere Pro and that kind of stuff, is there's no benefit to quad channel. Always get a faster processor with dual channel RAM that's gonna be better for you in the long run. And if you do get just one stick like this in your PC, send it back because you should not be using one stick. You need to get two sticks if you have a modern PC. It runs in dual channel. Don't use one stick of RAM, it runs at half the speed. Now question number five is very, very, very common. I get asked this pretty much every single day and it's a very easy question to answer for me. It's, can I add more later? And for me, the answer is no. Now officially that's the answer, but you can actually add more RAM later. But one thing to consider is that if you buy this box of RAM with four sticks in it, it's gonna cost around about $50 more right now than buying two kits of two sticks of RAM. So if you've got the exact same RAM, same speed, everything, and you got a box of two and another box of two, there's a chance it won't work together. Now the reason that this costs more is because it's binned to work together. It's guaranteed that four sticks of this exact RAM will work together. So that's why it costs more. Now, if you wanna get four sticks of RAM, I recommend you just go ahead and pay the extra 50-ish and get a four stick kit of RAM. If you get another two later, it might work, and I would do it on my own PC, but we're giving a three year warranty on these PCs. So if I send out a computer, it has to keep working. So I'm not gonna get two, for example, two boxes of this and put it in your PC because there's a very high chance that one day in the future you start getting blue screens or crashes in your games and it just stops working well. So if you get four sticks from Cataclysm, it comes from a box all together, just like that. Now on that same topic, something really important to realize just as of today, this might change in the future, is that for this DDR5 RAM, for example, it's even worse. You cannot get this 5200 megahertz kit and add in another two sticks. It pretty much will not work from the get-go. We're finding that if you do have four sticks, which is not officially supported whatsoever on any motherboard, any processor right now, that's why you can't buy four stick kits of DDR5. It might work at the start at 4800 megahertz absolute max, but if you increase it to 5200 megahertz or 6000 megahertz, it's just not gonna work. And that's the reason why a lot of you guys are asking me for workstation PCs with DDR5. I'm saying that you can only have 64 gig RAM because especially in Australia, you know, you can't get a 128 gig kit of RAM. You can't get four sticks and you can't do two sticks that are 64 gig each. It's just not available right now. That will change in the future, just like it did with DDR4, but right now, two sticks is the maximum of DDR5 from us because four sticks is just not stable. Now, just to finish off this video, I'll give you some of my recommendations, a little bit of a conclusion. So if it was my money right now, I'd go for DDR4, 32 gig Corsair RAM, and I'd be happy with that. Whether it's 3600 megahertz CL16, CL18, or 3200 megahertz CL16, that's gonna be more than enough for me. Now, if I wanted more performance, I'd just get a better processor. Um, but in terms of the amount of RAM, 32 gig is not that expensive compared to 16 gig. You know, it's like $80 or $120 more depending on what kind of RAM that you get. And I'd be happy with that. 32 gig will do absolutely everything, whether it's video editing, photo editing, gaming, anything that you wanna do, you can do it fine on 32 gig. Now, if you do need more, it's probably because you're a very specific person that's doing like 3D modeling or using uh, very, very large architectural files then 64 or 128 gig is probably better for you, but that's a case by case basis. If you're just getting this PC for gaming, don't bother with 64 gig RAM. It's gonna cost you more money and it's gonna give you no benefit. Now, if you do wanna go for DDR5 and you're completely adamant on DDR5, which is kind of what you have to do if you wanna get the 7000 series AMD processors anyway, then uh, make sure you get like 5600 megahertz at least. Avoid the 4800 megahertz stuff because it's probably gonna be slower than DDR4 anyway. You could have just got 3600 megahertz, CL16, DDR4 RAM, and that's gonna beat the low-end DDR5 stuff. So don't be fooled by that DDR5 name. Make sure the speeds are good enough. 
at least 5600 megahertz is really good if you're getting a lot of ram then 5200 megahertz is okay because that's more stable if you don't subscribe to us on youtube do it now because you know there's a lot of videos out there we're posting a lot of custom pcs pretty much every day and uh, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff let me know tell me what you want to see and we'll post it and if you want to get yourself a completely custom pc go to cataclysm.com.au click on the button at the top that says 100 custom fill in the form and i'll make sure you get a beast of a pc that fits your budget and your needs